Well, Magic keeps using the word special, and Magic believes that he is special, and I believe Magic knows the point guard position as well as anybody that's ever played the game, considering I believe he's the greatest point guard to have ever played that position. Um, it's fine. I find it odd that he, the names that he mentioned, Jason Kidd, that's what I said. Somebody across from me keeps saying Magic Johnson. I did not say Magic. I haven't said that one time. Not even close. You say he transcended. Well, I didn't say Magic Johnson. Okay, that's well, the greatest ever. Okay, well, transcendent yeah. means he's going to have to be. Well, gonna I didn't be, say Magic He's going to have to be well, way up there. words in my mouth. Jason Kidd. Um, Jason Kidd, first year he averaged 11. He was basically 11, 8, and 6. Five, I mean, 5. Jason shot the ball. Jason was 38%. Lonzo's about 32 um, Jason's a little better free throw percentage shooter. See, Skip, for me, let's just say I live in an exclusive building. You got 100 floors. And on the top floor is Magic. He's the great of the great. Now, this building is very exclusive. Even if I'm on the, the middle or the bottom floor, I'm still a pretty good player. I think there's a lot of room in between there. You think he's like he's going to be all-time, all-time great. I just don't see that. He's a once-a-generation passer. I don't see that. And he mentioned uh, Steph Curry. I don't know if people knew this. Steph Curry averaged 17 points a game as a rookie. I didn't know that. He, he averaged six assists and, and four and a half rebounds a game as a rookie. I didn't know that. No, everybody kept saying he's not a point guard. Right. And I kept saying before the draft, yes, he's a point guard. And, and if you look at his number, he's basically a 23-7-5 and five guy. 23 points, mm -hmm. seven assists. And five rebounds. That's what Steph Curry is for his career. Mm -hmm. But you because but because he does something better than assist the ball, which is shoot the ball from depth, you forget just how good he is at the point guard position. Mm -hmm. Because he's the greatest shooter, and it's only early, I mean it's only like what seven, eight years in his career. He's already the greatest shooter to ever live. Mm -hmm. So you forget that, man, Steph dishing out six, seven assists a game. But you forget that. Skip. I think Magic is saying, like, hold on, we drafted a kid at 19, he's 20. There's a lot. He's, this is the only shot he's ever known. He feels comfortable shooting this. Before we start tinkering and messing with that, he already has a lot on his plate. Let's not just mess with the shot just yet. Maybe they give him a couple of years, Skip, and see where the percentage, where his field goal percentage, his three-point percentage go from there. But it's going to be hard for me to believe, Skip, that if that, that, uh, his field goal and three-point percentage doesn't go up exponentially, they don't change it. Skip, he's mm -hmm. shooting 47% from, from the free-throw line. Mm -hmm. That's worse than, that's, that's Ben Wallace territory. Mm -hmm. That's Chris Dudley territory. You can't have a point, Skip, under no circumstances. Whatever he might become, maybe he only averages 10, 11 points a game. Mm -hmm. Skip, you cannot have a point guard, a guy that handles the ball that much, mm -mm. shooting that poorly from the free-throw line. And it doesn't help when every other game, he's not even taking free, uh, attempting free throws. Mm -hmm. So, Magic, I'm going to, you said be patient, I'm going to be patient. I just don't see that where he is now and how how he can go. I just don't think his ceiling is as high as what you think it is. Okay. So, I watched the game at Charlotte on Saturday night, and then I watched the post game, and they kept promoting a Magic Johnson interview. So, I hung right in there on Spectrum Sports Net here in Los Angeles, and I watched this from start to finish. And it was compelling and convincing as Magic Johnson always is. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to your point about the shooting, obviously Lonzo Ball's in a horrendous <laughs> all-time shooting slump. And the one point, we didn't have time to use all the video, but Magic did say that he encouraged Luke Walton before the year, we need a shooting coach. And he said that Luke said, no, we don't need one. And Magic said very pointedly, that will change next year. And he said, it's not just for Lonzo, but they're last in the league in three point shooting as, as a, a whole, team. Right. So that has hurt them. So there will be a shooting coach. And I'm going to guess, just guess that they will tinker or try to finesse his motion a right. little bit to more straightforward. There, I, Skip, I, in, in today's game, Yep. If you don't shoot that well, proficiently, obviously. you're not winning, Skip. Okay. Now back to Magic's big picture point. He did say this kid is special. Mm -hmm. And he made a very strong point and a, a great perspective point that because of his father, the pressure on this kid is all time, all time. We've never seen a bigger target painted on a kid's back no. because of his father 
the way this kid has had to bear up under the pressure. And remember, I, I've told you, in all the years I covered the NBA, the cliche was the NBA doesn't really start until Christmas Day. Right. So I love that Magic said, we're going to have a film session, but I've decided to wait game 30 maybe. Yeah. You know, like, let's right. just let him let him have his head. Right. Let, let him try to figure it out for 30 games. Then we're going to sit down and we're going to go over the tape. What do you see? Yeah, what this do you see? And this see. is what I see. And trust me, that will start to have an impact on this kid because this kid has been lost about half the time as he tries to figure it out. And by the way, just quick point of order about the Charlotte game. Mm -hmm. This is disturbing to me. Luke Walton versus Lonzo Ball. Disturbing because trust me on this. Lonzo started out that game in an attack mode you have not seen all year. Mm -hmm. It was hell bent to the rim. He was forcing the action in ways I haven't seen at all this year. And the numbers suggest, because he played the first nine minutes and 41 seconds of the game, and he had five points and four assists, a couple rebounds. And at the 941 mark, Luke pulled him. And he sat for the rest of the quarter, and then he sat all the way to the 450 mark of the second quarter. So that means for nine and a half minutes, Lonzo Ball sat on the bench. Mm -hmm. That's a long time, man. Yeah. If you're a starter, right? Right. So when Lonzo came back in the game, he went right back into his shell. Just deferred, half-hearted passes to the wings, go to the weak side and sort of stand and watch the offense. And we were back to where – I don't know if, if he's pouting or – it's it's not that he's pouting. Is, is he just – lost with his coach oh, the, the the way the, the the you know the the way he's played you know the the substitution patterns are crazy on this right. team so then he plays in the whole third quarter and they go up a point and they're leading by a point going to the fourth and guess what happens nothing play. happens he doesn't get off the bench in the fourth quarter and Jordan Clarkson went crazy had 14 in the fourth he was He's great because he can do that. Yeah. He can be he, he's instant offense. He is he's, not, he, he's more scored than point yep. guard. And they pull away and win, you know, again, it's just Charlotte. But to win on the road, back-to-back -back at Philly and mm -hmm. Charlotte, it's, it's pretty good. You know, it was – Right. Okay. So, now back to Magic. I don't know if something's going on with Luke Walton because, as, as you point out, Luke Walton just wants to win games. Yeah. And if his instinct tells him, I got to go with Jordan right. here, but why would you sit Lonzo for so long – from the first quarter in which he played high speed. And listen, when he gets in attack mode going up the floor, it, again, I saw some stats, some second-level stat. He's the third fastest with the basketball. Right. Well, w why would you take him out of his rhythm? Why would you make him sit for nine and a half minutes? See, Magic is looking at it like this. Luke, I need you to develop him because we're going to build around him. He's going to be the guy. Yeah. Luke Walton said, I ain't got time to develop him. I'm trying to put guys in That's there that can correct. win right now. I'm trying to win games yep. because if I'm developing him and we're losing, I'm not going to be around here to reap the benefits of him being what you think he can be because yep. someone else will be coaching him. Yep. Luke, you got to realize, Skip, who Luke, most of his career, he played with who? One Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant wasn't tooling, wasn't mm. mentoring no, anyone. He wasn't. He was a, he, Kobe, nope. like, hey, look here. Can you can you put the ball in the basket, Smush? Oh, you got to go. Can you put the ball <laughs> in the basket? You got to go. That's that's how I his agree. mentality was. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1. First things first, with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.